whether you are a beginner or an intermediate level player today i'm gonna teach you how to play the sicilian defense like a pro probably the greatest defense against 1.2 e4 so before i show you my top recommendation let's look at the sicilian variations that most sicilian players play this will help you understand the point behind my recommendation of the sicilian type that i'm going to make right I know some of you want to skip by this time because you think the Sicilian defense is just an advanced defense for strong players but trust me we are not going to go into those hard stuffs. So after pawn to c5 you are probably going to see knight to f3 on move 2 which is the top played move preparing for pawn to d4 next. So it is here where Sicilian players go different ways. For example pawn to g6 is known as the hyper accelerated dragon. What black is saying is that Hey, I want to play the improved Pierce defense or the improved perk defense after trading off my C pawn. How? D4, CD, knight takes, bishop g7, and let's say after pawn to c4, you go knight c6 first if you want, it's a bishop e3, you go d6, say after knight c3, then you go knight to f6, and bishop e2, castle short, and castle short. See what I told you? The Sicilian defense can be full of transpositions. So as black, you just managed to create your perk defense structure against white's pawn to e4. With the Sicilian, though arguably this can be thought of as a king's Indian defense structure because of this pawn on c4. So think of the Sicilian defense as a weapon that strong players use to try and transpose in the near future. So after e4, c5, knight to f3 if you don't want to play the hyper accelerated dragon you can also play something like the e6 sicilian which is called the french sicilian again see what i was talking about black chose to start with pawn to c5 with an intention of trading off this c pawn before setting up the french defense so most white players here play pawn to d4 after which cd happens and after knight takes, because this pawn has no defender, you take advantage of that by developing your king's knight with an attack. And in case you're wondering what happens after pawn to e5, this doesn't work ladies and gentlemen in all Sicilian variations. That wasn't just a normal opening move, it prepares for queen a5 check in order to win that pawn. And that's why you will never see white pushing pawn to e5 in the Sicilian defense. So they rather choose to defend that pawn. And it's worth noting that knight c3 doesn't just defend the e4 pawn. It also prepares for the move pawn to e5. Like for real this time because you don't have queen a5 check which would win this pawn. And this is why almost everyone plays pawn to d6. Like what you do in the perk defense to stop pawn to e5. And let's say white plays bishop g5. Well, you just unpin your knight. Let's say queen d2. You know they want to castle long. So before you castle short, there is one pawn move that is very important in the Sicilian defense, which you need to know by heart. Pawn to a6. A6 is the savior of the Sicilian defense because it stops knight b5, which may be very dangerous in certain lines. So this is the only pawn structure that you need to always keep in mind if you want to be a good Sicilian player. Strong players like developing their b knight on d7 so that after pawn to b5, they can now place this knight on b6 to start controlling these squares. Anyway, what other Sicilian type you need to know? After e4, c5 the intention is always to trade off your c pawn with white's d pawn again knight to f3 is by far the top played move that you're going to see apart from the hyper accelerated dragon and the french sicilian you can also play the modern sicilian with a view of transposing into the najov variation white still plays pawn to d4 then you take after they take if you don't know what to do just think of the contact rule that i presented in the video that has popped up in the card above playing the sicilian calls for aggression so you want to be attacking whenever you have a chance you develop your pieces strategically so knight to f6 makes a lot of sense because it attacks a pawn that is not defended so white has to defend it with knight c3 this is what they do not just defending but they are also developing a piece once again, 
It is up to you to transpose this into the improved perk defense. You don't have your C pawn. Well, in the normal perk defense, you always have that C pawn. And why do we trade off that C pawn? By the way, we do that to open up the C file for our queen's rook. In some lines, we even sacrifice our queen's rook on C3, taking white's knight, especially if white has already castled long. And just to remain with two pawns on the center. For example, you can go pawn to G6 in this position. And this is called the dragon variation, by the way. Anytime you see bishop e3, just know white wants to castle long given a chance. So you go bishop g7 anyways. Seeing that you want to castle short, they play pawn to f3, a strategic move preparing for the king side pawn storm. But you just castle short anyways. Because if these pawns come, you can always retreat your knight back to d7 or even to e8. Let's say queen d2. See, this is when you develop your knight to c6. Anything, even knight bd7 is playable. They usually castle long. And now that you have successfully built up this perk defense structure, it is from these kinds of positions where you start coming up with your own strategies to convert this into a win or a loss. And hey, I don't do this often, but it feels so sad to see many people watching my videos, yet they don't subscribe. Like there's a lot of you guys watching these videos. But you would do well to subscribe to this channel as well because that's the only way we can grow this community together and that's how you boost my confidence, right? Most people like the nudge of variation that attempts to address the b5 problem after pawn to d4, cd, knight takes, knight f6 attacking the pawn and after knight c3 here comes pawn to a6. So with pawn to a6, what you're telling white is that if you castle long, I'm going to play pawn to b5 immediately given a chance in order to be the first attacker before you wake up and start attacking on the king side. For example, after bishop e3 in this position, you know they want to castle long. So you can just go pawn to e5. Very brilliant stuff. They play knight b3. Then you go bishop e6. Pawn to f3. You know they want to start pawn storming from the king side. So you go bishop e7 anyways. Queen d2 preparing to castle long. You just castle short. You know this is coming anyways. They castle long. And this is when you start thinking of the move pawn to b5. So that's the whole purpose of playing pawn to a6. In fact, most advanced players like playing knight bd7 before playing pawn to b5. Why? Because they want this knight to sit on b6. For example, instead of going pawn to b5 right away, you go knight bd7 and after something like pawn to g4, trying to do this, you now go pawn to b5. If g5, you know what? Your attack is very fast even if you go pawn to b4 here. If they take, you're going to take with an attack on the queen. So they have to respond to that. And then you take back with your knight. See what I was talking about. Now you have your a rook that is going to control the whole of this highlighted file. So pawn to a6 is a big savior in the Sicilian defense preparing for pawn to b5 in case of this. Anyway, another type of Sicilian that you are going to see, which many Sicilian players like playing, is the knight c6 Sicilian. For example, after e4, c5 knight f3 then instead of going into the hyper accelerated dragon or the french sicilian or the modern that may transpose into the nudge of black plays knight c6 immediately which is the old sicilian normally the game continues as follows where there is this massive trade then you go knight to f6 attacking this pawn again there is no pawn to e5 by the way because of knight takes if knight c3, theory says black has to go pawn to e5. But once again, the problem is with knight b5 preparing to go knight d6 check. So white has to play pawn to d6. Now see the b5 problem that I was talking about. Black has to know a lot of theory in this position to be able to fight these kinds of moves. For example, if you just go on and take, they will take back attacking your knight and you have to know this theoretical move knight b8. Otherwise, if you play something like knight e7 in this position, I want to show you what grandmasters and other strong players know in this position. They play pawn to c4, turning this into some kind of a maroxy bind structure. If you go with pawn to a6, it's time for you to start packing your bag. I mean, it just looks logical chasing that knight away, but white can just play queen a4 here. This is a well-known trap in the world of masters. The thing is, black's a6 pawn is pinned to the rook on a8, so ab looks ridiculous, and white is just one move away from making this discovery. Things will be very bad. 
Worst of the top played move in the Leeches database is Bishop d7, which is a very big blunder because it hangs mate in one with a smoothed mate. So that's why with knight c6, you need to know exactly what you are doing and not just playing logical moves. Besides, the other problem with the knight c6 variation is that white may take advantage of the b5 weakness immediately with a move bishop b5, which is the Rosalimo attack. So white just wants to get rid of this knight. They don't need the light squad bishop in the Rosalimo attack. For example, if you go pawn to a6, they are okay trading off their light squad bishop, leaving you with doubled pawns. I'm not saying this is not playable, but this just simplifies the position for white. Pawn to d4 is coming. So because of these b5 tactics, the Sicilian variation that I would recommend to beginners and intermediate level players is the O'Kelly variation, which is also known as the lazy Sicilian. Let's see how that goes. So after pawn to e4, you simply go pawn to c5, then after knight to f3, instead of playing d6, g6, the French Sicilian or the knight c6 Sicilian right away, I propose you go pawn to a6 right away, which is the O'Kelly variation. This is very simple to play, ladies and gentlemen. With this one move, you are preparing to go pawn to b5 in advance and you have eliminated the Rosolimo attack, which I just showed you. Not to mention that there will be no knight db5 anymore. And with this one move, you are also preparing to open up the position with pawn to d5 given a chance. That's the whole idea. For example, they still go pawn to d4, after which you should take, after they take back, you now develop your knight with tempo attacking this pawn once again. Remember, if pawn to e5, there's always this little trap in the Sicilian defense, which wins that pawn. So pawn to e5 is almost impossible in the Sicilian defense. If you know what you're doing, they play knight c3 to defend that pawn. And look at this, because of the a6 move that you played, you can now safely go back to your e5 opening. They normally retreat their knight to b3 and then you start developing every piece with a tempo. You go bishop b4 pinning that knight because you just want to castle short. So most of the times they play bishop d3. This is the top played move both in the leeches database and the masters database. You can see that with your own eyeballs bishop d3 and what did i say the whole idea in the all kelly variation ladies and gentlemen is to open up the position with pawn to d5 immediately like what we do in this coach game now with black pieces first of all you mess up white pawn structure like this double pawns and then you simply go pawn to d5 i mean i like this you just want to oversimplify the game. If e takes d5, you take back with your queen. Your queen is well defended, by the way. White normally castles short, and you do the same. And now it's just a normal game of chess where the best planner has to win. I'll go with black in this position because of this wonderful pawn structure. So you can see how you avoided tons of theories with this one Sicilian defense. That's why it is called the lazy Sicilian. So just play pawn to a6 most of your problems are going to be over now see you guys i'm going to make a separate video on this sicilian variation if this video performs very well because what i've noticed is that sicilian videos don't do well on youtube because i mean most of you guys just want to watch some funny gambits and traps then after that you come back to complain how can i improve in chess well, the thing is you can't improve with gambits. Let me know if you'd love to learn more about the lazy Sicilian defense in the comment section down below. Hope to see you soon in my next video.